So today's show is jam packed. It's all about apples, and we have some brand new fun apple recipes that you are going to absolutely love. So sip a coffee, and we're going to get to work on recipe number one. Understand that it's going to cool down a little bit. It's already, to me, sometimes in the morning, uh, starting to feel a little bit like fall. So I think this is the perfect time to do a nice big pork roast. And I'm doing a great fall pork roast recipe that I think your family will love. And every time I do pork, um, the family says to me, man, this is so good. Why don't we have it uh, more often? It's just one of those things that I think something different other than chicken breast or, or, or beef. Uh, so, you know, make a pork roast this fall, and I think you'll be glad you did. Now, the way I do it is I've got a nice, uh, how gorgeous is uh, this, pork roast that I picked up at Festival Foods, and I drizzle a little olive oil over it. Pork is so lean these days that I think it needs a little oil just to get it some color. Uh, it just needs that little bit of fat. Now I like to generously season it with salt and pepper. It's a big piece of meat, so don't be wimpy on that. And then I'm also going to do some fresh rosemary. Dried rosemary would work great too. I really just happen to love the flavor of rosemary and pork together. That's up to you. If you're not a big fan, you can leave it out. Let's see, a few things to talk about today. Um, one, today's show is all about apples, and we have to thank um, the uh, Oneida um, Orchard for um, giving us these wonderful, gorgeous apples. Uh, apple picking season is upon us, and uh, they're getting ready for their a big Oneida uh, Apple Fest, which is coming up um, Saturday, September 22nd at the Orchard. Uh, it's from 10 to 4. Bring the family, uh, pick away, and there's going to be just a lot going on, hayride, a uh, ton of fun stuff. So it's 10 to 4. Uh, mark your calendars. Uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, September 22nd. It's just a fall tradition in my house. We always got to go out to the Apple Orchard and pick some apples and then, you know, head into the store and get some great apple cider and caramel apples and all that kind of stuff and take some pictures. It's just fun and, and Ireland still loves doing it, which is really, really cool. All right, so I'm just going to give that rosemary a, a rough chop. Oh, does that smell good? How are you today, Ann? Good. Good. Our next big night out, which is Sunday night, is almost sold out, but there are a few spots left, so Hey, why not join us? It is going to be a blast. We're headed to Bistro 42 in Door County, uh, just north of Sturgeon Bay. It takes about 45 minutes to get there from Green Bay. Five-course dinner, all paired with wine, $60 per person, and then that includes tips. So uh, come with uh, your coworkers, your girlfriend, your family, or come alone. It's a great time to meet people. So love to see you there. Call today, though, for reservations. It's going to be one fantastic night. And there's no Packers game Sunday, so no excuses. Take a nice drive and come join us. All right, so I'm just getting that rosemary in there. All right, so this now at this point is going to go into the oven and bake for about 40 minutes, half hour, 40 minutes, um, and start roasting. And then while that's roasting doing its thing, I'm going to get to work on the apple part of this recipe. Uh, so the pork is cooking, hanging out in the oven, and we're going to take about three apples and you don't even need to peel them if you don't want. I actually like with the peel on, it's better for you and it's a little more rustic. So we're just gonna kind of chunk these up. Remember the old Brady Bunch thing? Pork chops and applesauce, yes, exactly. So I always wondered why, you know, growing up, uh, we always had applesauce with pork chops. One, I think, it used to be that pork used to be so dry so you needed something to kind of wash it down. And that's how the whole thing started with fruit and meats together. The combination is back in like, you know, middle evil times, it was so dry that they'd have to serve some sort of fruit to be able to, you know, get that meat down. So that that's how it all started. Mm-hmm. Interesting, huh? I know. Learn something new every day. But it makes sense, and it really does work together, and it tastes good, too, so. Oh, these are crisp apples. I love the apples this time of year. They're just. All right. Chunk up those apples. These are big ones, so I think we'll just do two. I'm going to take some lemon juice, squeeze that over the apples. That'll keep them from, you know, getting brown. 
careful not to get any seeds in there. Somebody gave me this tip, and it's a great one. Just when you squeeze the juice, squeeze it over your hand. That way you can catch any seeds. And Genius. Love it. Thanks for your tips. I can use them. All right, now we're going to do some fresh garlic. These are the biggest cloves of garlic I've ever seen. And this is a, a fun thing to do. We're actually going to stud this roast with little pieces of garlic, and it's going to give it great flavor. And this is, I kind of moved ahead. Um, this is before you roast it the first time. I was getting ahead of myself there. So just take a little knife. And you basically just cut little slits into the pork, and you just squeeze this down, the garlic in there. And oh, going to give it some really great flavor. So the garlic will be roasting inside that pork. So good. And if everybody eats garlic, it cancels each other out. So, all right. In goes that garlic. Now is when you'll begin roasting it, now that it's all in there. All right. Let's get back to the apple part of this recipe. So apples, lemon juice. We've got a quarter of a cup of brown sugar, a quarter of a cup of, I'm just going to eyeball it, um, fresh apple cider or apple juice, whatever you have on hand. It's going to work great. I love the fresh apple cider this time of year. I mean, there's nothing better. A little bit of Dijon mustard. So you can kind of notice we've got some savory stuff and some sweet stuff going on. And then a um, quarter of a cup of chicken stock. So you just mix this together. The apples, the Dijon mustard, brown sugar, lemon juice. And then after your pork has roasted, you basically roast it for about 45 minutes or so. You dump the apples and all the juices around the pork roast and then let it roast another 45 minutes or so. Now here is the magic number, and I get questions about this all the time. How long do you cook pork? What's the temperature? Why is it that pork always seems to be dried out? Well. Forever today, we used to overcook pork. We, you know, cook it till it turned like shoe leather because we thought we had to. Uh, the pork producers have come out with a new number, and uh, it's 145 degrees is the magic number. So, uh, I have an instant read meat thermometer. I use it all the time. Use it for, uh, you know, steaks on the grill, so that I know when to pull them off. You know, if you like them a certain way. Chicken, of course, whenever you're cooking chicken, you want to make sure it's cooked through. Turkey. Uh, and in pork. Pork's probably the number one thing I use it for because at 145, that's when you want to pull this baby out of the oven, let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then carve it up. So 145 is the magic number uh, you're looking for when it comes to pork. Used to be we'd cook our pork, you know, 180. And yes, it definitely would be dry. I also like to serve some sort of a sauce with pork. Um, in this case, we're going to have all this wonderful, the drippings from the apples and the pork drippings. It's going to cook together. And um, then you've, you know, in pork tends to be a little bit drier because it's such a lean meat. Uh, so they've got that sauce to go along with it. And when you're grilling pork, I also like to marinate it. So those are my three secrets to making sure that pork uh, doesn't dry out and stays very, very flavorful. Don't overcook it. Have some sort of a sauce with it. And then if you're grilling, um, a marinade is really a, a great thing. Okay. Come back with me. Oh, oh, this is gorgeous. Smells so good. And we've got some stuffed acorn squash to go with this pork, apple stuffed acorn squash. It's going to be a lovely fall meal. So look at our pork. It's all browned up and beautiful. And we've got the apples around it and all those great drippings to serve with it. Um, uh, you know, wild rice would be my, uh, or mashed potatoes would be my perfect side dish to go along with this. But you need to make this. Uh, this fall for sure. My apple uh, roasted pork roast recipes on the website. You can also pick it up at any area festival foods.